Hey good humans, Jason here and we've got a big announcement. Today we're dropping another collection of human good called Service Level. Take a look. This whole theme is about judgments and how we come to these judgments often on a surface level. Uh, make sure you check out humangoodla.com and stick around to the end because we have a special promo code for you. For now, enjoy the episode. Personally, like if I'm gonna refer to myself, I'm gonna say autistic person, but yeah. you can say either or and I won't give a crap. Mm -hmm. My name's Jay, I'm 19. I was diagnosed late with autism. You know, there's no way to look autistic, it's just a whole spectrum of people. I'm Josiah, I'm 18. At first, I was really unsure about it because it sounded like it was bad, but I started to realize that autism is more like me than it is a disease. My name is Shana Krashen, I'm 23. Autism is more prevalent than people think, and uh, just if we can make the world more aware and acceptable towards it, it'll just be a lot easier for everybody. I am Christopher Carroll, I am 38 years old. I like to act, is that not related to autism? Okay. I'm Yoni, I'm 19, and I am an artist of all types. I really am proud to have autism. It makes me see the world differently, and that's totally awesome. My name is Joseph. Just because I communicate different doesn't mean I do not understand. Um, my name is Bella, I'm 22 years old. In high school, I couldn't really talk, so I was like nonverbal. I've just become more confident in myself and being able to talk to other people. I do find it to be uh, uh, somewhat of a bad label. This person is uh, special, as in uh, too different to function, I guess. It's like when I, I perform in the performances I've been in, people begin to whisper in the audience, whisper among themselves, was that person, person special or not? <laughs> and that, that seems a little harsh to me. The special could be used as something good, um, but it can also be used as, you know, something like, oh, like, why aren't you hanging out with them? Oh, because they're special. Like, you know, like, they're the other, they're less than, and it's, we're not less than, we're different. I feel like it can make neurotypical people feel better, like, it's, like, the right word to say, and, like, it just sounds nicer to them, but in reality, I think it's just more offensive if you're, like, using it with, the, with that kind of tone and inflection. When I think about special in the terms of autism, I think about special ed. And for me, it's like, why is it special to have some extra accommodations or to learn a different way? Like, it's not special ed, it's extra support ed. I agree a lot. The word special can mean pretty much anything. It's just the way that people take it, and I don't think that's fair. We are all special. I like that answer, like that. Joe. Yeah. Yes. I have trouble making friends. Three, two, one. <laughs> it's hard for me to make friends because I am nonverbal. Yeah, I didn't really start making friends until I started college because I wasn't like in a lot of activities and stuff. I just always wanted to be by myself, and I always found it hard to talk to people. Um, for the longest time, especially when I was in middle school, I had a bit of a hard time making friends, and so I was basically on my own for a while. Um, but until I made it, until I made it, until I went to um, junior high, I went to a um, private school. Their, their whole entire goal was to basically like make a community that are just trying to find friends and stuff like that. So. That's why I'm on the somewhat disagree, because it's like, I, I have plenty of friends now, but in the long run, when it came down to middle school, I had a really rough time. I honestly don't have trouble making friends. I talk to everyone I meet, and everyone I meet, I kind of make friends with. Um, I don't know, it just comes naturally to me. I just say, hey, let's be friends, and they're like, yeah, and it happens. When you first meet somebody, I'm good at the initial like talking and friend thing, but 
uh, it's when like the long term and you know it just gets too complicated and then like also I just find like I don't like a lot of people and so like of course not a lot of people are gonna like me so it's just <laughs> so it's just like some would agree. Well, I, I guess for me, it's just, I also have social anxiety, so it's never been easy for me to make friends, but I, uh, sometimes I just feel better being by myself and doing my own thing. And when you go out and you meet people, you have to really push yourself to, you know, to know what to say and to know what not to do, and you don't stim and stuff like that. So it's just harder to go out and have that whole mental energy put towards that when you can just be yourself by yourself. But I do have some friends, so that's why I'm here, not there. Uh, I have a similar problem. When I was younger, I had social phobia, and uh, I spent a lot of childhood just living or playing inside my own head, which uh, didn't exactly seem to help me with people skills. Yeah, it can trigger things. You can like trigger a meltdown like you don't want to have to deal with. Sensory issues. Yeah. Period. Period. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying I feel, yeah. <laughs> Being diagnosed with autism helped me understand myself more. Three, two, one, go. Well, for years and years, I was wondering like, why is the music in the car where no one else is saying it's loud? Why is it hurting me? Why is like, why can't I make friends easily? Why am I not picking up on sarcasm? I feel like it really did help me understand myself because I stopped feeling so bad. My body and brain sometimes work against each other. When I first read the, what do they call like, it's not symptoms. Like Criteria. What? Criteria. criteria, yeah, the criteria uh, for autism, it was like mind blowing because it was like reading something that I didn't even know existed and could be put into words. Like I said, I thought everybody was just dealing with it and hiding it better. And I've turned to so much more self-love since I found out about my diagnosis just two years ago. It's just been like probably the most freeing thing for me. I actually used to have meltdowns like daily. I would just get so angry and nobody knew why. Yeah, and just I didn't know things why. would just pop it off. And I realized that after I got diagnosed with autism, everybody around me noticed how less angry and how many, like how less my meltdowns were because you start to know how to prevent them because you start to know what's making you melt down. Well, I think I have to say I somewhat disagree because I've not actually been diagnosed. Uh, no one's tested me for autism. So what do we go by? Just simply what a doctor happens to say on any given day or? What made you want to come today? A few doctors have said I have autism. Although at least twice as many doctors I've known have said I do not. What do so, you, what do so you believe? As or of you now, I, I believe I do have autism somewhere, but I can't say I agree with a diagnosis because I don't actually have a diagnosis. So. Are you planning to get one in the future? I don't know anyone who will give me one. That's a big issue, actually. They're crazy expensive and crazy hard to get. I got it's like true. a whole ordeal. I got one for my psychiatrist because I was already under his care. Yeah, uh, it, it really does help me, especially, to find a different route with education. Like, um, I had a huge problem with um, mathematics and stuff like that. And now, after I got diagnosed, and I'm going to the school that um, helps um, typically with um, autism, it's like, now I'm doing statistics. It does really help. It really helps me to um, understand what, how my brain works and how I can get help. So. And because I know that my brain works differently, I see the world in a more creative aspect, yeah. uh, thinking outside of the box, and I'm over here, like, I'm outside of the, like, I'm outside of the, you, you know. You can't even find the box. I'm out of the box. <laughs> yeah. I'm outside of the circle. I'm in the galaxy, excuse me. <laughs> the shapes are around me, and I'm outside of all of them. It bothers me when people pity me. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> I get pity for a lot of things. Because I don't have only autism, I have multiple mental illnesses and medical conditions too. And everyone, when I like tell them all of them, they're like, how can you be happy? Your life sounds difficult. I'm like, it's not that, like, it's just what I know. It's, it doesn't have to be the end of my world. And I don't like getting pity for the things I have because just because I'm disabled 
doesn't mean my life necessarily sucks because of that. Yeah, I only said some would disagree because I grew up like really obsessively masking. I don't think people pity me, I think the opposite. I think people have very high expectations of me because uh, I can kind of mask and present that I think that most people forget I'm autistic and don't treat me with the, some of the help I need and have a lot less patience for it. And so I don't know how much I'm pity more the time I'm not believed. I've even had like therapists try to like convince me I'm not. I have to like teach them about it and then they say I'm not. So it's very frustrating. Over here, Joe. Up against the mic. I can't change the way I am, so instead of pity, I want people to try to understand and accept me the way I am. It's also just like, don't pity me, like be with me. Like like be with me in the moment. Like yeah. don't feel bad for me, like like as if you can't do any like mm -hmm. treat me like I am, like I am just a normal person. So like growing up, people used to like baby me. And now like I look at being 22, I look back and it's like, they just should have probably treated me like um, a normal child. Cause that can be a hindrance in itself, people babying you, that can exactly. be another added knock that you don't, you know. Makes me feel like I can't be my own person. Yeah. yeah. I used to have that problem with a lot of people. Like they would be like, "Oh, it's okay. We're we're all a little autistic or something oh, like that." that. Yeah. And it's like, "No, they're." I hate that comment so much, and I get it so many times. I hate that comment too. Yeah, we're not all autistic just because you have like you relate to like a couple of the things on the traits doesn't mean that you're autistic necessarily. You exactly. have to have more than just three things, you know? Yeah. Then you're just being a person. <laughs> if yeah. You just relate to a few. It's like you're human too. I would rather not have awesome. Three, two, one, go. I strongly disagree because if I didn't have autism, I wouldn't be the same exact person. Part of my identity, would I really be the same person if I didn't have autism? But I think I have to stick with just somewhat because I haven't actually been diagnosed with autism, so. Another thing is that um, uh, the issues and the struggles that like, I have with being somebody with autism is like, that I encounter day to day mostly have to do with the fact that I'm living in a neurotypical world, not that I have autism, if that makes sense. So it's, I would much rather live in a world that's more aware of autism and, or a less neurotypical heavy world. That would be what I would rather change, not changing myself, if that makes sense. I may have autism, but that makes me who I am, and I wouldn't change it if I had the choice. Yes. Preach, Joe, preach. <laughs> preach, I feel that. That's why I prefer um, diagnosis first language, like autistic person than people with autism, because personally, it's like, my autism makes up me. It's not just like a part of me. Like I, my diabetes is a part of me. My pancreas not working doesn't affect my the way I act, the way I am. Yeah. But my autism affects the way I see the world, the way I process, the way I feel things, the way I go about things and socialize. And even though I don't like everything about myself, I don't think that being not autistic would make me love myself suddenly. I think it's just about the fact that I just need to work on accepting myself more in general. So I. I feel like I'd rather have my autism because it's made me, me. Yeah, um, I, I also, I would say personally, like I'm a person with autism, but um, I also don't care really how people uh, use it. I remember when they started saying like autistic person versus person with autism, I was like, oh, okay. I don't care that yeah, much. Exactly. Just if I, I had to pick, yeah. like I don't. You call me either, but if I had to pick personally, like if I'm gonna refer to myself, I'm gonna say autistic person. But yeah. you can say either or, and I won't give a crap. Because mm -hmm. to me, I see it as like a neurotypical community being like, oh, we just need to be as nice as we possibly can. And it's just, it, I don't know. I, I feel like I've never heard an autistic person freak out about it. Really, I always hear neurotypical people freaking out about it. I feel connected to other. Well, like, I kind of agree because 
some people have the same exact things that I go through, but then also somewhat disagree because um, people, there's like higher functioning and lower functioning, so it's kind of hard to connect to people that are like, I don't know how to say that. I, I got that, yeah, yeah, yeah. because they're, they're so different, I guess, it could be, I guess, harder to, you know, connect in, in some degree, but um, we may not all go through the same exact things, but as a label, like, autism, I think we can all, like, connect to that, and that's how I feel, like, with the label, um, with that label, I feel like a, there's a good sense of community there. I do agree, it's like, although we have different stories about how, of, you know, of how, of autism, I, I, I believe that we, we, where we can relate to each other and still like, um, have different perspectives. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like, I feel like, and especially right now, it's like we spread apart because, you know, we're, we're scared to say that we're autistic. But I believe that, um, we need to start to group together and start to educate people and, you know, I've noticed yeah. a rise in communities online yeah. for autism. Yeah, uh, neurodiversity and stuff yeah. like that, so. When I, when I first found out, it was like great to like deep dive into the internet and get all these uh, autistic perspectives, and I, and I connected with that online. But then when I found, when I went in real life and I started to meet people or started to talk to people more, I, I felt just kind of isolated again, and I felt kind of like that same thing. I, I think it's just the same thing. If I'm in a group of neurotypical people, if I'm a group of autistic people, I'm just going to still kind of feel alienated, and so I just kind of stopped trying after a while. It helps when you don't have to explain yourself to others, and you can just relax and hang out without any judgment. Honestly. That's true. <laughs> so right, Joe. Thank you, Joe. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Woo! <laughs> okay, do you want to all put our hands in? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> right, ready? Oh, my gosh. Wait, are we actually going to do this? I guess so. <laughs> One, two, three. Awesome! Hey guys, thanks again for sticking around. Uh, if you're still here, make sure you go to humangoodla.com to check out the amazing new surface level collection. And for you amazing good humans, we actually have a special discount code that's only available for 48 hours from the drop of this video. So if you're watching right now, go to the website humangoodla.com. All right, we love you guys and we'll see you next time.